Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, I'd like a hot dog all the way, please. Coming up. Here you go. Thank you. Ew. What, what is this? That's a corn-based hot dog flavored tube shaped thing. It's uh it's almost good. That'll be four fifty. You know what? No thanks. If almost good enough isn't good enough for you, why would it be good enough for your pet? Add kennel kelp to your furry friend's diet. Sprinkled on your pet's food, kennel kelp helps with arthritis pain and stiff joints. It can also reduce shedding, fill in missing areas, and improve their looks. Healthy pets show even more energy and have better attitudes. See results in four to eight weeks. The good news is, kennel kelp isn't just for pets. It's good for you, too. Sprinkle it on your cereal or use it instead of table salt when seasoning your food. Kennel kelp is the holistic care solution for pets and their people. Safe for dogs, cats, birds, cows, chickens, reptiles, almost anything that walks, flies, or slithers. It's a holistic health solution for humans, too. To learn about their many products, visit kennelkelp.com. Get kennel kelp for a happier, healthier life. Hello, yes, and welcome to the Kennel Cup Holistic Healthcare Show, and I'm your host, Bill. And today we're going to talk about the benefits of Kennel Cup for human consumption. Kennel Cup is a wonderful food supplement. Kennel Cup, according to many of my clients, is almost a life-saving food supplement. You can check out my testimonials over at my kennelcup.com website. There's a link in the description of today's show to get you over there. And I recommend that for everybody. It is inexpensive, readily available, safe, and beneficial. Adverse reactions to kennel kelp to this juncture for over the last 10 years have been virtually non-existent, and it can be taken with almost all hypothyroid conditions. One must reduce it in some cases if one has Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. And some of the reasons why kennel kelp combined with other main seacoast vegetables, main coast sea vegetables, uh, such as dulse, wakimi, rockweed, just to mention a few, Irish moss. Kennel kelp is not the same as bladder rack. For instance, Irish moss, dulse, nori, ziki, wakami, those are other varieties of sea vegetables which are all good in and of themselves and combined, incorporated into a meal or as a supplement, it's very helpful and very nutritious value. So just understand the distinction that when someone says sea vegetables, there's lots of controversy between what kelp and seaweed and so forth are. That's the clear distinction between them. The main difference for therapeutic purposes is that the kennel kelp has lower levels of toxic metals and a much higher alginate content and it also contains other substances as well that appear to successfully bind in the mercury and other toxic metals found in all products from the sea. You can look at the link on my webpage to uh, clarify the kelp analysis for humans and see the low, um, virtually non-existent heavy metals content because it is harvested in Iceland. This is important because eating a lot of other sea vegetables as with eating some other fish, depending on where it's harvested, can have high arsenic toxicity. As far as fish per se, I align myself with Vital Choice for that reason. And you may want to check out the Vital Choice link on my website as well. The properties of kennel kelp. It's beneficial for humans as well as animals in at least the following four ways. It's an excellent all-around mineral supplement, and kennel kelp is an excellent source of most of all the important trace minerals. And there are a few such sources anywhere on Earth that coincide with the nutrient-rich dwarven kelp, kennel kelp. Besides the well-known trace elements such as copper, zinc, magnesium, chromium, and others, kennel kelp supplies many of the ultra-trace minerals, the ultra-trace minerals such as germanium, iridium, rubidium, and others of which we know a lot less about. However, they may be very important for human health, especially today when the food and the soils have become so depleted. And I've talked it over the years many times about how kennel kelp also is an excellent soil amendment to enrich our soils. 
Kennel kelp versus other mineral supplements. Kennel kelp is rich in iron, calcium, magnesium, and some zinc and selenium, and low in copper. This is quite a good blend of minerals with one of the main reasons why it's one of the main reasons why I suggest kennel kelp in conjunction with other synergistic mineral supplements. Most people need the extra minerals desperately just for the trace minerals alone. Please do not take most mineral supplements in and of themselves, such as isolated Eli products, electrolytes, and or specific other sea minerals, fulvic and humic minerals, and others, all of these have one or more of the following problems or can have. They do not contain the alter trace minerals as to the level of kennel kelp, and they contain the wrong balance of these minerals, and they contain more toxic metals without containing substances to counteract or bind and remove the toxic materials. That's the biggest benefit of kennel kelp. Kennel kelp versus green superfoods. I suggest kennel kelp in lieu of some other green superfoods because kennel kelp is much more yang. This is quite important, although it is a somewhat esoteric difference. Kennel kelp does not lose its potency. Its higher salt content seems to preserve it. So uh, exposing most dry vegetables to the air will cause them to break down and their value is diminished. So green superfoods, any green superfood actually should always be uh, sure that it passes that litmus test. And if you're taking capsules, you may even want to put them in the freezer to accentuate the potency. It does not contain spirulina, chlorella, or blue-green algae. These common ingredients in the superfood formulas work synergistically, however, with kennel kelp. Some superfoods build up in the liver, indicating that they are not compatible with human physiology, no matter what health benefits they may have. This would be a friendly suggestion to comply with the old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Perhaps a more simply stated phrase would be the homework. Kennel kelp has much more iodine, and the Kennel Kelp 1000i version has two times the iodine content. Again, please see my website, and uh, I find this is needed today, despite what some health authorities say. Kennel Kelp is less expensive. Now it's a great time for me to extend a 25% discount across the board to all of you on any and all of the items featured at my kennel kelp page, pertinent to kennel kelp in the various sizes. Should you be interested in ordering any of my BH sales products, contact me prior to ordering so I can extend the 25% and just reference this blog talk radio show. Kennel kelp is an excellent overall nutritional supplement in addition to its high trace mineral content. 100 grams of kennel kelp also contains 1.7 grams of protein and vitamins A, B, C, D, E, and K. It is particularly rich in folic acid, and it can also contains many other phytonutrients found in plants along with soluble fiber. And it even contains some fatty acids, including omega-3 fatty acids and others. Kennel kelp is a source of a special form of readily available calcium. This is a complex phenomenon because many foods contain calcium. However, I find that kennel kelp, carrots, carrot juice, sardines, and raw, raw dairy contain the best forms of calcium needed to date in my layman's opinion. The calcium found in pasteurized and homogenized dairy in seeds and nuts and in a few other foods is not as well utilized for some region, which is not clear totally at this time. Kelp is much better for the physiology. It's an excellent source of bioavailable iodine. This is kennel kelp's best known advantage. It provides plenty of iodine, a mineral that most people need more of today due to the presence everywhere of iodine antagonists, bromine, chlorine, and fluorides. These interfere with our iodine uptake and utilization, causing widespread thyroid problems and many other health problems as well. 
That's why I also recommend if you are imbibing fish or looking for a good fish oil, I continue to recommend Vital Choice and Vital Choice Seafood and the other good sources of bio are other good sources of bioavailable iodine. Please read their safety report through the link at my website as most food from the sea is now loaded with mercury depending on where it's harvested. Iodized salt provides some iodine, but it is not enough in almost all cases. Although the iodine and table salt, I would all recommend uh, Himalayan salt available through my friends over at Vitality Herbs and Clay that I blogged about and talked about in my last show. Uh, it's not that well utilized by people. Table salt. That's why I recommend Himalayan salt in lieu of and kennel kelp. You can actually use in lieu of table salt and sprinkled on version. Iodine levels can be a concern, but not a major concern, because kennel kelp is a natural food, and the body seems able to regulate the iodine absorption from it. Why kennel kelp versus some other iodine preparations, you ask? I suggest kennel kelp instead of Adoro, Lugol Solutions, and Dior, the counter brands, and Prolamine, Iodine, and so forth and other iodine preparations because kelp kelp is non-toxic and almost all other kelp preparations such as those that I just referenced build up in the liver to some degree indicating their toxic, excuse me, toxicity level. Also, all single mineral products can interfere with the absorption of other minerals. Minerals all compete for absorption to some degree. So taking a balanced food such as kennel kelp rather than a single mineral product, appears to uh, be much safer for long-term use, which most people need. Kelp is often more effective, unique to its individual's own health scenario in all of my clients' cases. This may be contributory to the fact that it's a natural food and perhaps better utilizes, is better utilized. Kelp also contains 20 or more other trace minerals which is a distinct advantage, as these are needed today by almost everybody. Kennel kelp is less expensive, especially considering that it is a green food supplement as well as a source of iodine. Note, in a rare few cases, I have been told that Lugo's solution or, or, or Iditarol was used for a short time uh, by some clients that opposed uh, concerns to prevent goiter. And I don't know why that is so, but it would be my best guess that the body needed this particular form of the iodine. You would have to consult with those respective uh, physicians. If you experience goiter, always consider a already physician, as the Lugos solution would eventually not be needed, as it is indeed a little bit toxic. So, again, I recommend kennel kelp in lieu of, but always consult with your physician, and do check out the analysis page and see how low the arsenic is. The mercury and arsenic problem in any kennel kelp, you can look at my old website, the link is on my homepage for the frequently asked questions, and look specifically at frequently asked question number 9, and number 10, number 9, does kennel kelp have arsenic in it? The answer is, there is indeed a small amount of arsenic in kennel kelp in all kelp, the amount in a five-pound bag of kennel kelp is smaller than the tip of a toothpick, and the average amount in a five-pound bag is you would have to go out four zeros, point four zeros, and then the three parts per million. So to compare it with other products, if you eat just one apple, you're eating many times more arsenic than is in an entire five-pound bag of kennel kelp. The amounts are too small to cause any alarm. And the number 10 question, if you do procure that yourself and seek it out, the number 10 question is, can can, can excuse me, can, hum, can humans eat kennel kelp? And I eat it every day, I have for 10 years. I actually sprinkle it on my own cereal in the morning, and I add it in lieu of table salt for um, seasoning of the food. A drawback in any kelp in the most other sea products is the presence of toxic metals, mainly mercury and perhaps arsenic, in higher levels in other products. This is why you want to look at Thorben in the 35-plus year history. Read about them at the parent website. 
the interesting thing is that using kennel kelp, I have not found evidence of greater mercury toxicity in any animals and or humans that have serviced over the last 15 years. This is not true when um, one uses some of the other sea vegetables depending on the derived source, such as dulse, wakimi, and um, nori and others. The parent company of kennel kelp, Thorfer and Kelp, which I say, has the 35-plus year history and researching this further to make sure that the kennel kelp is a safe product. It is USD organic, USDA organic, and it's the only omni-rated kelp for in, on the market. Confusion about the word kelp, as I said earlier, one fact that I have noticed and noted over the years is that occasionally a bag of so-called kelp is not really kelp, depending on its source from other uh, suppliers that are claiming it as such, but it may indeed be bladderwick or another family strain of seaweed. In these cases, there can be higher toxic levels to your homework. Adverse reactions to any kelp. Occasionally, a person has a reaction to using any kelp. The main ones sometimes include irritability, perhaps nausea, and a few cases of hair loss. Most reactions are temporary. None of my clients and or animals have ever experienced that. I use that as a broad-based term for kelp worldwide in all case scenarios. Most of them are due to the removal of toxic elements such as chlorine, bromine, fluorine compounds from the body. In most cases, all one has to do is reduce the dose for a while if you're experiencing any of those problems and then work up slowly with the other brands of kelp, usually. One client has reported to me that he had a reaction to another company's kelp that went away from when he took zinc along with that particular kelp. I think you'll find, as I suggested to him, by taking kel kennel kelp and uh, diminishing the extra zinc because the zinc content is quite good in kennel kelp. So again, to this juncture, I've been fortunate to have absolutely no adverse re reaction in my own body or in my pets, to give the product to them, or any of my clients or their pets. And I've never had a complaint about how good of a soil amendment it is. In fact, everyone seems able to take kennel kelp eventually if the person follows a nutritional balancing program with other supplements that they may be administering to themselves and or their animals or both and or applying as their soil amendments. Kennel kelp is a more, uh, more yang food and food supplement. This is an interesting fact about kennel kelp and the other sea vegetables compared to land-grown vegetables. Kennel kelp in particular is very yang product, meaning rich in salt, exposed to a lot of sunshine, and of a more contracted, drier nature than the water that is expelled from it. Such qualities are needed today because most food has become far more yin which means we're expanded in cold thanks to genetic modification. And other reasons such as heavy pesticide use. I'll be talking about pesticide use in a new study that came out as to how contributory that is to damaging brain cells. And a little sidebar, you know, the consensus, depending on who you talk to, is America is becoming dumber by the day take a look at pesticide use on vegetables. I'll get back to that in another, side, another time, another show. This is where I usually segue into how nutrient-rich kennel kelp is when utilized as a soil amendment, but I'll confer you and refer you to my website for today. I'll talk about the soil amendment applications in another episode, but it is excellent in the soil. Kennel kelp is Therefore, a balancing food, and this may be one reason why it seems to work so well with no problems in my experience. The gang quality of the kennel kelp does, however, make it a more powerful therapeutic food, almost like an herb, and this could be one reason why it causes more reactions sometimes when you compare it to like eating zucchini or broccoli in some cases. This may also be a factor in why the toxic metals in some kelp, in particular, are not well absorbed at all. And that's being researched more and more, especially post a few years back, the tragedies of Fushima, especially. 
Doses of my kennel kelp, adults can usually take at least three 600 milligram servings of kennel kelp daily, preferably with meals. When one is able to do this comfortably, most people can double that amount as much and up to and including 3,600 milligrams daily. I want to stop right there. The caveat I say, regardless of whether you're administering it to yourself or your animals, you always want to be prevalent and aware of how prevalent kennel kelp and kelp in general is in so many other products today. So you want to watch your iodine intake if you're taking multiple source products that have kelp as an ingredient, especially a good kelp like kennel kelp. That's the only um, thing that I would alarm folks to make sure you have an appreciation for how many products kelp is in and you may be taking and or eating foodstuffs that have a high content of iodine already. That's when you get into the hyper and hypo thyroid conditions with an overindulgence. Some people need to take even more. If they can do so comfortably for a few months after eating kennel cup, you build up the tolerance. Again, do everything under the guidance of your physician. That is how deficient many people are in iodine to begin with and the other minerals that they are lacking, which are found in kennel kelp, and their body immediately adjusts accordingly. Children can take up to 1,800 milligrams of kennel kelp daily. Younger children and babies, you know, you want to use specific physician with babies especially, but they can take up to 600 milligrams of kennel kelp daily. But again, each of our individual metabolisms are unique also. So know your body, know your children and your animals' bodies, consult with your physician and or your veterinarian, and be absolutely assured of the correct dosage levels. You can see my feed rate charts pertinent to animals, and you want to stay stringent with my earlier mentioned levels. But you want to do your homework again on um, iodine sources coming from other kelp ingredients in products and or foodstuffs that you're administering to your family, yourself, and your pets. You want to be very vigilant of that. The kennel kelp body wrap, you can use it in the bath uh, or as a body wrap in conjunction with my sacred clays because of the need to quickly remineralize the body, the use of my kennel kelp and BHCL sacred clay. You can see my website be itself sacred clay and uh, my friends over at Vital Herbs and Clay and ordering direct and all of that over at my website. We talked about that before. But you can use it as a body wrap. I do it myself. Um, we'll see in my case for my arthritis, but it allows a person to absorb more minerals and uh, perhaps even absorb other phytonutrients found in both the kennel kelp and the sacred clay for sure simultaneously. It works well for those who are very demineralized, which includes most people, actually. It is also yang in and of itself, and it is safe. So far, women seem to need it more than men for some unknown reason. Um, Physiology, probably. We'll leave it at that. Most people can benefit a lot from this procedure, from beginning a nutritional balancing program. Most need the procedure every day for at least up to 6 to 12 months, but I've been doing this over the last 20 years. The materials, I've talked about, you need to wrap kennel kelp. You, uh, for one wrap or one bath, you'll need about a pound of kennel kelp, uh, obviously water. Uh, you'll also need about 10 cups of water, and you can use tap water, spring water or distilled water if you feel eccentric. And uh, you really want to get extra mineral value, take a look at my tourmaline water. That's being a little bit exorbitant, but if you afford yourself the opportunity and your pocketbook affords that opportunity, you're getting um, the intake of the natural mineral intake with the good, clean, pristine water, depending on your area or tap water, you know, because you don't want to defeat the purposes of the mercury and so forth that are coming through your tap water. <laughs> Whole wheat flour is also a good ingredient to throw into the mix, and you'll need a few tablespoons of flour to make the kennel kelp wrap, you know, more sticky if you're actually going to prepare a wrap. And then you would bring the 10 cups of water to a boil and then turn down the flames to simmer slowly. Add about a pound of kennel kelp, stir it in slowly to prevent it from burning. 
I'll stop right there. This is where you might want to look at my sea mineral liquid kelp, seven strains thereof also. Uh, we offer all these versions of kelp now with the powder and so forth. So let the mixture simmer for about an hour. Check on it from time to time, stirring it if you're using my you know regular kelp especially so it does not stick to the bottom of the pot and burn. And break up any lumps of kennel kelp, add a little more water, you know, if it gets too dry, and the cooking is important to make the kennel kelp more yang and to kill any bacteria or over and above what goes through the normal processing. Um, you know, when it's harvested, just the double um, protection, but it's very pristine as it, pristine as it comes out of the bag. Uh, they may be mixed with the kennel kelp. Add a little, you know, whole wheat flour at the end of the cooking to make the kennel kelp more sticky so it will stick together to your skin. Usually about a tablespoon or so, two tablespoons of flour. It's all that's needed. Then you apply the kennel kelp. It's, it's real messy. It is. <laughs> but it's high efficacy, and if you go slow and moderate, it doesn't have to be as messy. This is a, It's a little messy, but hopefully you can make it fun. You, you can undress it and apply the kennel kelp and be a so sacred, creole, uh, sacred clay all over you, your skin. And you can wear uh, if you're, you know, young lady or what have you, female bikini bathing suit or whatever, if you prefer men, wear a pair of trunks, whatever. It's your bath. <laughs> it's your wrap. It's your privacy. You may need to bring a space heater into the bathroom to keep the bathroom nice and warm. You can apply to the kennel kelp while sitting in the bathtub or lie it on a towel or to help reuse the kennel kelp easily, spread a plastic shower curtain liner right on the bathroom floor and stand in it or sit in it. Also, do not apply it to the buttocks and the back of the hips just to make sure that it doesn't, you know, get somewhere that it probably wouldn't be too pleasant. <laughs> Once the kennel kelp is spread on the skin, let it stay there for at least two hours and up to three hours. If the kennel kelp dries on your skin, it will be hard to recycle and reuse it. So it may be better to apply a thicker layer that will remain moist for that two to three hour duration. So obviously keep an eye on that. And after two to three hours, brush off the kelp or use a spatula to collect it even and put it in a container and place it in the refrigerator and you reuse it the next day in your garden, in your plants, give it to your pets, depending on your comfort zone, reusing the kennel kelp if you sit or lie down on a plastic shower curtain. You should be able to collect most of the kennel kelp contained right on the shower curtain. Um, the clay, if you use the clay exclusively, it'll wash safely right down the drain, not doing any harm to the um, septic system or pipes if you're on a public system or what have you. Add some water to it so it's not too thick. And welcome into the distribution process of the kennel kelp. Okay, I'm down to about a minute and a half, so I'm going to play an outtake from a previous show that gets a little bit into my kennel kelp and sea miracle, and I'll see you in the next show. Always remember the BH cells produce the most good health in all animals and humans. Pay attention to the sale over at the blog. Take care. Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, I'd like a hot dog all the way, please. Coming up. Here you go. Thank you. Ew. What? What is this? That's a corn-based hot dog flavored tube-shaped thing. It's uh, it's almost good. That'll be four fifty. You know what? No thanks. If almost good enough isn't good enough for you, why would it be good enough for your pet? Add kennel kelp to your furry friend's diet. Sprinkled on your pet's food, kennel kelp helps with arthritis pain and stiff joints. It can also reduce shedding, fill in missing areas, and improve their looks. Healthy pets show even more energy and have better attitudes. See results in four to eight weeks. The good news is, kennel kelp isn't just for pets. It's good for you, too. Sprinkle it on your cereal or use it instead of table salt when seasoning your food. Kennel kelp is the holistic care solution for pets and their people. Safe for dogs, cats, birds, cows, chickens, reptiles, almost anything that walks, flies, or slithers. It's a holistic health solution for humans, too. To learn about their many products, visit kennelkelp.com. Get kennel kelp for a happier, healthier life. available. 
available out there, and you're going to love this one. I just learned so much about seaweed that uh, kelp, I, I don't even know what to call this, but it's really, really cool. So I'd like to introduce you to Bill Wolf, who's the CEO of Torvin. And uh, this is some really cool stuff. So tell us about this, why you got into this. And